The Intermax Aqua Fusion 120 millimeter ARGB All-in-One CPU Liquid Cooler. This is cooler we'll be looking at today. I'm gonna to be taking it out of the box, showing you everything that comes with it. I'm gonna be looking at the build quality of it. I'll let you know if I think it's actually worth the money or not. I call these things unboxing and overview. I don't really call them reviews because I believe to have a review, you need to use a product for quite a while on a day-to-day -day basis to see how it holds up. This is just an unboxing and overview of it. There will be timestamps in the description below. If there's a certain part of the video you'd like to jump to, you're more than welcome to do so. Maybe some other links down there that may interest you. Don't forget to do all that fun YouTube stuff on your way down to that description box. And without wasting all your time, let's flip over and we'll take this thing out of the box and run down through the specs and see if it's straight for your next gaming PC build here in 2022. Alright, here we go. We have the Intermax Aqua Fusion All-in-One 120mm CPU cooler taken out of the box. Also, when I ordered this, I actually got a little surprise with it. Um, this one actually shipped with the mounting bracket for the LGA 1700, which is used for the Older Lake systems, which I think is pretty cool that they did add this. Um, you don't have to contact them to get the bracket system for the LGA 1700 if you're going to do an Older Lake. I did take this uh, the plastic wrap off of it. Um, looks like we've got some tape here we're going to have to cut through. Uh, we'll uh, cut through the tape here, maybe. There we go. We're getting it now, ain't we? Yeah, I figure it's gonna be like most all-in-ones. Everything's gonna be in one little packet and pull the whole thing out, the whole cardboard out. Um, see here, All right? Well, no. This one actually opens up like a power supply. Open up that flap, and then you open it up this way. Okay, it looks like you have the user manual, which should have all your information in it if you for how to install it and whatnot. And you got a little bit. Of foam here on top for, to protect it uh what else do we got here here we have the mounting hardware we need we'll go through that here in a little bit um what's in this baggie uh looks like some cables and rgb rgb controller if you need it we'll go through that in a little bit as well anything else got some silicon gel um there we have the fan and then you have the radiator and the pump head and looks like uh looks like the box is pretty well empty nothing else in it there and we'll take and get rid of the box go out like we do with most of them we will look at the pan here first pull out the little plastic it's got um right off the bat looking at the cabling you do have your standard five volt argb header pin connector here which does have a pigtail on it if you want to daisy chain your argb if you have to and you do have a four pin pmw fan header controller here it does have some argb lighting around the fan of it uh seems to be a pretty stable fan it does have uh, rubber rubber padding on it here that way it eliminates the vibration between the fan and the radiator looks like it's got a little bit more fins on the back of the fan or the housing seems like it's got more fins for the housing to hold the motor in place than what most fans have got it definitely feels uh pretty premier i mean it's pretty pretty stable fan Let's see what kind of specs we got for the fan here. All right, for the bearing, we do have a ceramic bearing fan here. Uh, of course, it's a 120 fan, so it's a 120 millimeter both ways. This one is a little bit thicker than most. This is a 26 millimeter thick. Well, most of them is just 25 millimeter thick. Um, like I mentioned, off the back of the fan, it's 500 to 2000 RPM. The airflow is 39 to 79.8 CFMs. The fan noise is from 17 up to 32.6 dBA, which should be pretty quiet. Most households is uh, only about 40 dBA, so you shouldn't shouldn't make much of a noise. It does have a 4-pin PMW header, like I showed you, and the 3-pin ARGB 5-volt. Um, it's, uh, it does say it does come with an adapter, with an extension adapter. Uh, the fan itself, the fan blades and the hubs ain't ARGB, but it does have ARGB around the housing over there. Okay, we'll pull the radiator and the pump and the block over here. Pull it out. Looks like the pump itself has a three-pin header for the for the powering the pump. It don't have the four-pin, but for a pump, you normally only need a three-pin, but it's just a standard three-pin fan header there. Uh, of course, it's got a piece of plastic at the bottom. You have to peel off before installing it, of course. It is a copper block. Pretty nice. It does have ARGB lighting around the, around the head of it. Also in the middle, it kind of looks like an infinity mirror with the uh, Intermax writing. Intermax logo across the front of it. Um, down here is an extra little connector. I'm not too sure on what that is. We'll have to uh, 
once we get the goodies out of the bag and see what that is but i'm assuming that will be to control the argb on it as far as the sockets that the block will fit once we'll get into the hardware here to go through what all it fits we have intel lga 2066 2011-3 2011 1700 1366 1200 1156 1155 and 1151 and 1150 for amd it'll fit uh, am4 am3 plus am3 am2 plus am2 fm2 plus fm2 and fm1 and they say that the whole block is uh, copper which everybody knows copper is the best best material you can use for heat transfer so that's pretty nice the water block on it it does have a patent dual chamber water block design to it the tubes on it don't seem to be very long they're they say they're 400 millimeters long which don't seem to be very long but most 120s you normally put on the back of the case they should be all right it does have a premier reeve tubing they are made with flexible and long lasting with multiple layers uh they feel pretty nice of course the only thing you're really feeling that fabric over top of them but they feel pretty good looks like they are connected pretty good to the pump and to the radiator both pretty nice and this one does have the pump inside of the head block or the water block that connects to the cpu looking up here at the radiator it does have uh intermax logo on the side over here it's a pretty common little 120 looking radiator not too much uh, outstanding from it it does have uh, aluminum fins to it, which I don't know if you can tell on video. Um, it looks looks like your standard little aluminum radiator. There you can kind of see down through the fins of it. Looks like they're pretty condensed. This does come in different sizes. You do have, I have the 120 here, but it also comes in a 240 and a 360 variant. They do come in black and white. If you're doing an all white build or something, you can buy the white one instead of the black one, but I got the black one here today. Seems to be your common thickness of a radiator. Uh, the radiator size is 120, which is across this way. And you got 154 millimeters this way. And this is a 27 millimeter thick radiator. So like I said, it's your pretty common little radiator. Seems to, seems to be fairly made, fairly well made. All right, so let's get into the hardware here to see what all comes in the hardware with this. We're gonna start out with this little baggie right here. Uh, looks like we have a little ARGB controller if you don't want to hook it up to your motherboard. That is a proprietary ARGB connector there. And I'm going to say it leads off onto a regular ARGB header. Yep, it does. There's going to be your power cable for your ARGB controller. It is, you can connect and disconnect it. It runs off the side of power. This one here goes from your ARGB header or your motherboard into that control box with its proprietary connector. Okay, the bigger bag, the bigger baggie we got here. Looks like we've got some more cabling and more brackets and all the fun stuff here. All right, guys. Now getting all this stuff out of the bigger bag here, we do have the back plate, which will be needed for AMD systems and Intel. Like most water coolers, they you have to use their back plate. They ain't gonna be compatible with the back plate on the AM4 socket. And you will have to use this compared, depending on which socket you're using, depending on which one of these that you need, as far as the holes and whatnot go. You got a little bit of a vibration pad here. That way you can put it on the back of the back plate to stop the vibration a little bit, it looks like. And these brackets right here, you can tell they got three three different notches in them. Two different, yeah, three different notches in them. This is for your, you will be sliding these onto the side of the water block for AMD. And here will be the brackets that you need. Look more, look a little bit more like a longer, longer gated C. You will be using these ones for your Intel builds if you're going to be putting it on Intel. Uh, you do have another SATA power connector here. Not too sure on what that hook into. It's only got two pins on the inside that plug-in. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's only two two prongs sticking up. Here is your ARGB. Uh, just a little splitter cable that plugs into two different ARGB devices. They do give you a little bit of thermal paste. Their own brand of thermal paste. Uh, you got five little screws here. I believe this is to mount the plates onto the blockhead because it looks like these here will be screwed into the blockhead instead of just slipping on. These here will be your uh, fan, fan screws. You go through the longer ones will go through the fan and into the radiator. And the shorter ones will just go through the case into the radiator depending on your orientation, the way you want to set it up. Here's your baggie of four standoffs. That's going to be to mount your back plate, I'm assuming. Depending on which one it is, that is for the 11, uh, the LGA 2011, 
kit and there's your spring loaded thumb thumbnail thumb screws and your spacers and whatnot which we'll have to get into all that whenever we do the install of it and have to figure out how to install this thing may be a little interesting so you definitely want to keep a hold of that owner's manual there all right y'all that's gonna be pretty well the unboxing and overview and the first looks of it let me get reset up here and I'll come up with the conclusion of the video and let you know what I think about the product. We took this out of the box and ran down through the specs of it, what specs I could find on it. It seems to be pretty well built. It seems to be pretty good quality. Not too bad. This thing does go for a day of the filming. This thing is about an $80 investment for you. Actually worth the $80 by the first film, the first impressions of it, I think it is. But of course, the real test is going to be the install and the temperature testing of it. I am going to be doing that on the channel here. I'm also going to be comparing it to a decently priced or reasonably priced air cooler in the same price point. If that kind of content interests you, make sure you go down and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell where you're notified when them videos go live. If you'd like to have more information about this product, there will be links in the description below. There's some other links down there that may interest you. And don't forget to do all that fun YouTube stuff on your way down there. And if you think of a all-in-one 120 liquid air cooler you'd like to see me compare this against, or a tire style cooler you'd like to see me put this against, make sure you leave that in the comment section below and I'll take it into consideration. With all that being said, you all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.